GPU mining just died. Let's drink some minor tears and we'll celebrate lower GPU prices. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Now today on a special edition of PC Builder News, we'll cover the Ethereum merge, how it killed off GPU mining, yay, and we'll look at where GPU prices are going. Nvidia is set to announce the RTX 4090, possibly the 4080, and even maybe the 4070 Ti. So I hope everyone has their 10,000 watt PSUs ready. EVGA tells Nvidia to go fly a kite because they're not making their graphics cards anymore. We'll take a look at Ryzen 7000. Is it too expensive? And YouTube comment scammers are back. They want to tell you why giving them money on Telegram is amazing. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible Activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. The Ethereum merge, it finally happened. After years of development and causing not just one, but two GPU shortages, the most recent which nearly killed off PC gaming, Ethereum finally merged in the early morning hours Eastern time on Thursday, September 15th. Now with Ethereum accounting for about 98% of all GPU mining profits, suddenly 100% of the miners are slugging it out for 2% of the profits. We have some live shots on how miners are handling it and yeah, it looks like not well at all. It looks like they are experiencing all four stages of grief at the same time. Once they get themselves to the final stage, acceptance, we expect a massive flood of used mining GPUs. As we previously calculated, the Ethereum mining hash rate was the equivalent of 8 million RTX 3090s or 31 million GTX 1660 supers. Looking at the current mining profits from the remaining altcoins, they have plummeted in just the first 24 hours to less than 40 cents per day for even the RTX 3090 Ti. We expect those profits to go to zero and into negative territory in the coming days. That will lead miners to begin selling off those millions of GPUs, crushing the used GPU market in the coming months, which should also put a damper on demand for next-gen and GPUs like the RTX 4000 series. But I wouldn't jump on eBay just yet. We probably need to give those miners at least a month to fully deplete their supply of copium and hopium as well as let the pricing wars begin. We'll cover this near the beginning of October in our regular GPU market update. So stay tuned and stay subscribed. Speaking of next generation GPUs, Nvidia continues to tease the RTX 4000 series launch press conference it's calling GeForce Beyond a special broadcast at GTC on September 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And just like with the Ryzen 7000 announcement, we'll be live tweeting it. So follow me at PC Builder Jason on Twitter. While we are certain that Nvidia will announce the RTX 4090, we've been less sure about the RTX 4080 and 4070 as rumors and NVIDIA's own statements to shareholders seem to indicate that they're trying to delay next generation GPUs in order to sell through a mountain of new RTX 3000 series GPUs that are still out there as the GPU market and the GPU prices have crashed. Just exactly what NVIDIA will announce, it's still a mystery, though leaker Moore's Law is Dead has claimed that NVIDIA will announce three GPU models, the RTX 4090, 4080 16GB and a 12GB model, possibly called the RTX 4080 12GB or the RTX 4070 Ti. Either way, we're expecting power draw of these GPUs to be the largest ever. So if you haven't checked out our new PSU buying guide we just released ahead of the new GPU launches, you should. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. Now performance is rumored to be anywhere from double the RTX 3090 Ti, but pricing is also rumored to be going up, possibly way up as Nvidia seeks to carve out a higher pricing tier above the RTX 3000 GPUs it still needs to sell off. Now for context, let's look again at that recent Steam hardware survey, which showed that nearly 22% of users had an RTX 3000 series GPU, 
while less than 2% have an AMD Radeon RX 6000 series GPU. That's more than a 10 to 1 advantage in favor of Nvidia. But with AMD possibly offering faster RX 7000 GPUs that won't blow up your PC power supply at a cheaper price, as well as a flood of cheap used RTX 3000 GPUs, we'll see how long Nvidia can stick to its rumored RTX 4000 prices. Breaking news, Jason, here because there's some crazy news that just dropped. Jay's Two Cents and Gamers Nexus uh, just, in fact, about 35, 40 minutes ago, dropped huge bombshells that, in fact, EVGA is going to separate itself from being an NVIDIA board partner. I'll let you guys a, a link to their videos down in the description. You can check that out. I did want to offer some thoughts on that, though. Uh, obviously, the drama of it aside, right, this is, you know, to me, it should be a huge wake-up call for NVIDIA. Whether or not it actually is, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I gather probably not. They'll probably just keep moving on. But in terms of my overall thoughts, first of all, as a, a PC builder, I'm a longtime fan of the EVGA brand. I try not to get too you know, in, in, in what brands I'm a super fan of, or I've been a fan of just in the past, you know, because obviously I want to evaluate everything fairly here. So it's it's really disappointing uh, for me to hear that EVGA is going to exit the graphics card business. Don't fully understand why they're not willing to consider going to AMD, possibly going to Intel, though <laughs> Intel doesn't look like it's doing so well. Maybe it won't even have a graphics card business soon. But from the PC builder standpoint, in fact, of how this impacts consumers going forward, I just think it's another kind of shot over the bow of consumers that's saying, hey, looks like there is way too much consolidation in the enthusiast do-it-yourself PC gaming period space. Uh, there are too few companies right now that control the graphics card market. And by too few, I mean literally just about one. The Steam hardware survey numbers, you can see NVIDIA is just absolutely dominant in ways that no company, in my opinion, should be dominant of any market. Let's just forget, forget uh, PC stuff. This should be dominant of any market. It's bad for consumers. It breaks the fundamentals of what is supposed to be the competitive marketplace when there is not enough competition. Consumers are typically the ones who end up suffering. I feel like we've seen that over the last year and a half, despite the silicon shortage, despite what happened with Ethereum and GPU mining, EVGA and AMD to a certain extent, although they're a very small part of the market, could have done a lot more to ensure that their cards were not being sold directly in large quantities to miners. They could have done tons, but they just wanted the money. And ultimately, since they were the only ones making the card, what are you going to do? Buy from somebody else? LOL, I'm sure as they're saying, I still think Nvidia makes a, a good product. And I understand that while a lot of people, you know, are like, well, maybe I could consider AMD, but at the end of the day, I want to go with the safe product that I feel like is over here. And I certainly get that. I just think from the market dynamic standpoint, it shows me that there is more to do here as a consumer. There's more to do in terms of educating consumers on what our options actually are and kind of breaking the fanboy mentality. Because if anything, the last two years has taught us anything. It's that none of these corporations are our friends. It's cool to get excited about stuff. This is a hobby, right? We do this for enjoyment. This is fun and all, but remember these companies aren't your friends. So I think if anything, that should really just reemphasize that. There's consumers on one side, co companies are on the other side, and we need a better system to hold them accountable in what should otherwise be a competitive marketplace and we can see what happens when there isn't competition and my fear is that with EVGA exiting the game that's even less competition potentially in the Nvidia space so we'll have to see how this all, all this plays out but just wanted to bring those thoughts to you because I'm sure we're going to get a million questions those are my thoughts for at least this just really, really kind of earth shattering moment right now in terms of the PC industry. Now, speaking of higher prices, AMD announced that DDR5 6000 speed memory is going to be the sweet spot for the upcoming Ryzen 7000 series CPUs that launch on September 27th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. If you want the full breakdown, including my thoughts on it, then check out our full Ryzen 7000 coverage video linked down in the video description. But checking prices on DDR5 6000 speed memory the cheapest DDR5 kit right now that's 6,000 speed or faster, it's still $220 for an XMP kit. Although we are waiting for the arrival of kits using AMD's new overclocking profile called Expo. Now, meanwhile, pricing for DDR4 3600CL16, which is the current sweet spot for Ryzen 5000, including the Ryzen 5800X3D, is $70 for the cheapest kit. Extrapolating from AMD's own performance numbers, which showed the Ryzen 7600X, beating the i9-12900K by 5% in gaming, 
that's roughly equivalent to where the Ryzen 5800X3D is. That means using AMD's recommendations for even their cheapest CPU, the Ryzen 7600X, priced at $299 US, along with the cheapest currently known X670E pricing, which is the ASRock X670E PG Lightning, listed by a French retailer recently for $270 USD without tax. That gives us a total platform cost of $797 US. Now, if we compare that to the Ryzen 5800X 3D, offering nearly identical gaming performance, which is currently going for $419 US, along with that $70 DDR4 3600CL16 memory kit and a mid-level B550 board for $140, we get $629 US total platform cost. That means Ryzen 7000 is gonna have a $168 or 27% price premium. Of course, DDR5 pricing, it has been steeply declining in the past month, and we still don't know the actual US pricing for ASRock or Gigabyte's X670 lineup. And of course, AMD and its board partners are set to announce their full and cheaper B650 motherboard lineup in an online event on October 4th at 11 a.m. Eastern. I should also note that the performance numbers we're talking about here, they are with the highest end GPUs of the current generation, which could be hitting near their theoretical maximums. And it is possible that we'll see the 7600X pull ahead in gaming once faster next generation GPUs arrive. Speaking of money, YouTube comment scammers are back and they're back with a vengeance. Now, previously many YouTubers like myself, we've been able to limit the scammer spam, which typically uses the same profile picture as the YouTuber themselves on their own channel. And they reply to as many comments as possible in order to trick people into contacting them on apps like WhatsApp or Telegram, only to then scam the unsuspecting user to send them money to ship supposedly free and fake giveaway products. YouTube has of course done very little to help its own creators in the fight against scammer content spam, but eventually most of us were able to build robust enough filters to catch 99% of it. Well, unfortunately the scammers have adapted like the evil Borg hive mind that they are and they figure out how to circumvent much of the filtering. Creator comments on their own channel will always have an oval around their name and verified channels like mine will also have a check mark next to the name in the oval. Also, it's a good policy just to assume no legit YouTube creator will ever ask you to speak to them on a platform outside of YouTube. So if anyone offers to send you something for free, if you pay them a bunch of money, that's a pretty good indication it's a scam and you should run for your life. Unfortunately, people obviously do fall for it or these scammers, they just wouldn't be spending so much effort to post their scammy spam comments. So please be careful out there. This was our very first episode of PC Builder News. And this is something that I've been wanting to add to the channel for quite a while. So let me know down in the comments, what type of news, product releases, other types of developments you'd like to see us cover in future segments. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you're looking for how to buy the best PSU in 2022, especially with power hungry GPUs coming, including how much wattage you need to give those new GPUs, then check out our 2022 PSU buying guide right here that we released a couple weeks back. And we'll catch you on the next one.